this is my former boss, Alvin Toffler, right? Many of you know Al, basically, you know, he basically in 1970 wrote like a, a monumental bestseller, which was basically Future Shock, all right? But what he's really telling us here is that every person in this room is a futurist. Now, you're part-time futurist, all right, you know, so, you know, but you are a future, you're a part-time futurist, and it's because how we're wired. And, 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 and Al basically says that, that, it, is that the reason is human beings, basically, we think we can't help what, di what differentiates us from the lower orders is our ability to think about the future. And so, like, that set of assumptions about what does not yet exist. And, and I think Clay Shirky did a brilliant job really, really, like, driving it home because we, as human beings, basically are no longer thinking alone. We're no longer thinking alone and we are no longer thinking, thinking silently. And that has a major implication. The future is bright because there is nothing that human imagination linked with the power of analytics cannot accomplish. Again, Al Toffa, he says, the one major trend, the uber trend that we all have to be concerned about is the acceleration in all things. The acceleration in all things. Well, I'm not telling you anything new here. Right? You're like, okay, things are accelerating, future, okay, I got that. Thorn. How is that new? How does that impact me, all right? So he told us that change itself has changed. Okay, interesting, but okay, I'm, I'm not getting the operational takeaway, all right, type of thing, all right? But, and, and he also forecast, and he was correct in this, is that catching up and keeping up would become a major source of angst. Right? This like, and I don't know, uh, forgive me for the American cultural uh, alert, but this, this, this picture up here is like the, the Lucy commercial, which I think has actually been broadcast. I know that it's in space because like, the first thing that aliens will bring back to us is this particular uh, uh, visual. But it's, it's the assembly line where they're making chocolates and they, they come too fast and they start eating all the chocolates. So that is, that, that's sort of part of the problem we're bumping into. But one of the primary jobs of futurists is to time how fast things are changing. How fast things are changing. That's actually how I spend a lot of my time. And here's, now I know many of you feel tired. I mean, this is actually a study done by Yahoo, uh, you know, basically, and, and, and OMD. And they said, like, okay, let's add up all the multitasking, all right? There is a reason you're tired. The reason you are tired is that you add all that type of stuff up, it's a 43-hour day. It is a 43-hour day. The defining reality of the world we live in is basically exhaustion. All right, this is how we're coping. I'm not certain that is sustainable, all right? You know, but, but you know, we just add that stuff up and we just keep adding on and adding on and adding on. And earlier today, Clay Shirky, a, guy, a good friend of mine, basically talked about the pace of change, how it's accelerating. I actually timed this, all right? You know, we actually looked at this, you know, basically, and, time, and the speed is accelerating. Basically, once every 50 years or so in the early industrial age, once every 20 years in the late, later industrial age, and now what's happening, the current situation, the current metabolic rate for major change is once every five years in what you could call the meso-information age or what we're, I'm calling the new no. Every five years. All right, now, and this is validated. Some of you know Jeffrey Moore. Jeff, unfortunately, Jeff, Jeff's a great fan of, of analytics, great fan of the folks at SAS. He, he couldn't join us here in Berlin this time, but, but he basically says every five years in the technology sector, just one part of the big change landscape, says that things change enough to force me to write another book. So we call that convergent validity, all right? So, I, 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 so every five years, new world, new game, new rules, new behaviors. So that's sort of the timing. Here's where it gets interesting. We know a few things about change because it's such a part, big part of our lives. One, we know the pace of change is accelerating, but here's the nuance. The pace of change for various peace parts of the world we live in is accelerating at different speeds. And I, I Joe, Quinton, I, I Joe from like Bank of America actually mentioned this, the thing that we live in a multi-speed world. This is a speed gun. This is a, a, a speed gun. I, I don't know, do you have a traffic police here in Berlin? Or, or, is that, or, or have you automated that? I, I found that out the hard way is that you don't have traffic, you don't actually have police on the side of the road, you have technology. I just thought people, I was getting my picture taken as I was speeding in, in, in Amsterdam. But anyway, right, a macro trend every executive must understand is basically, is this thing called desynchronization. Things are moving at different speed. Things are moving at different speed. This is very, very disruptive. And here's the uber disruption, if you will, like basically desynchronization number one, which we've all been sort of talking about throughout the conferences today, is like the disconnect between our ability to create, collect, and store data and our capability to thoroughly process and exploit it. 
So the amount of data is increasing at a certain rate, and our ability to understand it and render value from it is moving at a different rate, historically slower. And so sometimes, as a futurist, you have to go to places where they uh, live the future. And uh, one of the places is DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency at the, uh, at the Department of Defense. Their new CIO is a, is, a, is a friend of mine, Terry Takai. But anyway, they're talking about the pixel to pupil ratio, which is basically how much uh, the images that they're looking at is so far skewed in favor of pixels that only a small fraction of imagery, imagery can be processed. Too much information. Too much information. So how do you understand this issue of too much information? Well, you go to Google. And now, to sort of drive it home, if you Google the phrase too much information at Google, you get 202 million results. Does that, am I making my point? All right, am I making, but, but of course, like, you can't just go to one because that, you, that would not be enough. That would not be due diligence. You have to go to two. There's another search engine out there. And because they're new and they try harder, they have 388 million, if you will, like of these things on too, many, too much information. So, I, so, so we've got that, so we don't have to beat that thing down. You know? And here is the reality, is there will be an incomprehensible, mind-explodingly massive expansion in the amount of information floating around. 